Now, is Ireland's wild animal population growing out of control? Well, some farmers believe there are far too many wild deer and a large-scale cull is needed. Similarly, some fishermen say a surge in the seal population in Irish waters is disrupting their ability to make a living. Culling wildlife is an emotive issue, vigorously opposed by some animal rights activists. So, are there too many deer and seals in Ireland? And is culling the answer? Well, Conor McMorrow has been finding out in this piece that was filmed across the last 18 months. The relevant COVID safety measures were adhered to at each point in filming. If you'd like to see a deer, you might come here to the Phoenix Park in the heart of Dublin where there has been a fallow deer herd since the 1660s. But away from here in the wild, according to some, the deer are a problem. Deer as a species is, is at the top of the chain. It has no natural predator. And because of that, their numbers are expanding at a, an exponential rate. And it's not only deer, another species, seals, are also perceived by some to be too numerous in the wild. The problem isn't, isn't with seals per se, it's the, uh, the damage they do to nets and the amount of fish they take from the nets. Seals are a protected species in Ireland and culling them is illegal. Culling deer is legal, something animal rights activists literally oppose. Any wildlife advocate worth their salt, as a matter of fact, uh, will speak out against the fact that uh, the killing of these animals has never ever solved the, the, the problems that are reported um, with deer and with seals. Crosshaven in Cork is one of the communities where fishermen say increasing seal numbers have had a detrimental effect on their livelihoods. I started fishing late 70s, early 80s, and uh, you wouldn't see that many seals around. There were days came you would actually stop what you were doing to watch them there at times, but um, the population just got bigger and bigger. We used to fish monk for five months of the year. We'd lose about 30% of our fish to seals. They'd tear the fish out of the nets, they'd leave the heads, they'd take the tails and the livers, uh, damage the nets in the process. and. You know, there was enough fish there, we were still making money, the seals were getting some, we were getting most of them, but it just, finally, they were taking 95 to 100% of, uh, of the catch. The size of our seal population has been a long-running concern, as this 1967 report from a young Bill O'Hurley in Waterford shows. The seals come up harbour from the salties, prey on the salmonets and steal just what they like. One fisherman recently lost in one catch to the seals 30 pounds worth of salmon. We have two species of seals in Ireland. We have the common seal, which is the scarce one, and then we have the grey seal, which is more abundant. And we have more seals in our waters than we did have maybe, you know, 30, 40 years ago. According to the National Parks and Wildlife Service, the number of seals has increased around Ireland's coast. The number of harbour or common seals grew from 2,955 in 2003 to 3,489 in 2011-2012 to over 4,000 seals six years later. There were an estimated maximum of 7,083 grey seals in 2007, rising to 8,850 in 2013. The numbers grew to an estimated maximum of 9,365 in 2019. The main grievance fishermen have is that the seals are damaging their nets and eating their catch. So where fishermen are putting out nets, the seals have copped on that here's a, a row of fish that they can come along and eat. And this is where you have depredation of nets in particular areas with seals. And this is what infuriates the fishermen. I mean, if they took one or two out of the net and went off with it, it mightn't be so bad. But a whole net full of fish destroyed a bite out of each of them and they ripped like this, it would break anyone's heart. Fishermen say that diversifying their fishing techniques in a bid to outwit the seals has not been successful. Myself and three or four boats from Ballycotton, we used to long line for conger eels. So all the congers were exported to Spain. Again, it was a nice earner. Again, the seals just kept tearing the congers off the hooks. That was the end. There was another fishery gone. We, we know we're just wondering like how much more has to be sacrificed before people realise that there is an issue. Seals are a protected species under Irish and EU law and it is illegal to kill them. Special licences can be issued to kill them in exceptional circumstances. We've never supported a cull. It is possible to get a licence for an individual seal. If that happens, 
at least we know that the seal, it has been done right. We don't want to see people going out and taking pot shots on with a shotgun, you know, which could happen and has happened in the past. For more than 30 years, Brendan Price and Johnny Woodlock have been involved in rescuing seals through the Irish Seal Sanctuary. Uh, you couldn't but love seals, you know, particularly when you spent 30 years on wintry nights finding them by the foreshore, taking them home with the frost in your back and chew feeding them. How could you do anything but love them? Let the seals in peace. The Irish Seal Sanctuary does acknowledge the frustrations of fishermen. Fishermen are not cruel people, they're like the rest of us, and they're out there fishing for a living. They are very frustrated naturally going home, you know, with a box of damaged fish, you know, and they've got the mortgage to pay. So, you know, it's upsetting. Um, we understand it though. We try to engage with the fishermen. The seal sanctuary opposes culling seals, but they do recognise numbers are increasing and they advocate an alternative plan. There has been work done in Canada on sterilising the females. The amount of the drug is, is sufficient, that is small enough that it can be delivered by dart gun. So what you're doing there is you have a form of management without killing the seals. So that sounded like a, a good idea to me. In Trinity College, Ian Donoghue opposes this method of seal contraception. Darting animals with contraceptives, how successful is that likely to be? You're shooting darts, whether it's for deer on land, uh, or whether it's seals in the, in the sea, uh, you're, you're going to have empty darts floating around the place. You're polluting the, the sea with dangerous things. And actually, how successful is that likely to be as an exercise? So I, I'd probably actually advocate far more uh, humane shooting uh, is probably the, the most viable strategy. That's Professor Donoghue's position on seals. And he also believes culling deer is acceptable in certain circumstances. Sometimes culling is absolutely needed for a lot of reasons, actually. I mean, because there's no really wild places in Ireland. These things don't have wild predators. And sometimes that means that their populations can go out of control. If we decide to cull, it has to be based on evidence. We have to know how many animals there are, where the animals are, what sort of animals we might need to cull to best achieve our management goals. In the absence of that, culling is simply wrong. Ardent environmentalists, surprisingly perhaps, acknowledge culling is necessary in some cases. There is also a view that deer and seals are doe-eyed creatures that humans should not kill. I was always against the idea of anthropomorphological things. Things look cute, so it should be allowed to live. So therefore they look nice, we leave them be. But you know, woodlice don't look nice, so we don't want those and other things don't. I mean, that's no way to treat them. That's not a scientific way of anything. I'm certainly against something being cute, it's allowed to live, not cute, it isn't. There are no accurate numbers available for the deer population in Wicklow, with estimates varying from 50,000 to 150,000. But farmers say the increase in the Sika deer population is causing serious problems. The impact on the biodiversity is that it's impacting on the grassland and the crops itself. Um, in the past, uh, the occasional deer certainly wasn't eating that amount of grass or crops, but now they're actually coming in and damaging those. It was a problem that we never had in the past. But they're also impacting, you know, on uh, our ability to continue annually to plant native species of broadleaf trees on, on the farm itself. Uh, that's no longer possible because that will be the deer's first choice uh, for dinner when they come to the farm. High in the Wicklow Mountains National Park, there is evidence of how deer grazing can impact on the trees and other vegetation. This is what the impact of deer can have on a woodland site. Even on the ground vegetation, you can look here, this is bilberry or, or, or frocken, and it's quite vigorous in growth. And then here, it, the ground is just uh, picked, picked bare. Or if we move back over to, to here, the, the Scots pine seedlings have um, have tried to establish themselves, but they're just uh, a lot of the time they're being grazed. They're being grazed down. Over 5,500 deer hunting licenses are issued to individual hunters nationally every year. Their license returns indicate wild deer numbers. The numbers of deer legally killed increased each year from 2013. Over 44,000 deer were legally killed during the 2018-2019 season. They are the most up-to-date figures available. Figures for last winter are expected to be much lower due to the COVID-19 lockdown. For every species that you're talking about culling, like there's usually much more um, 
sustainable, much cheaper uh, and much more long term solutions that involve, you know, elements of rewilding, be it, you know, certain elements of maybe predator reintroduction um, or ecosystem restoration. But, you know, saying that there are there are species like deer, for instance, who may need to be culled while a restoration say and you could say rewilding project has been put in place because their numbers have exploded far past what they would be in like a healthy ecosystem for instance. The Department of Agriculture acknowledges an unsustainably high deer population has been an issue in Wicklow for several years. Since 2018 the department has overseen the Wicklow Deer Management Project. The best way we can manage deer is to manage them as naturally as possible. And in the normal circumstances, natural selection is what happens. In the wild, the weakest deer are the deer to be taken out. We have no recreational hunters on the program whatsoever. The last thing we want to see is what we see many a time on social media is the stags being shot. That's unnatural selection. And landowners realise that and farmers realise that. That's the same as shooting the prize bull. Just as was the case back in the 1960s when these deer hunters were filmed in Wicklow, deer stalkers still go out in the open season, generally between September and February. The National Parks and Wildlife Service, we haven't had a national survey of deer in decades because of the chronic underfunding of the service. So we actually, in truth, we don't know how many deer there are in Ireland. If we get that information and find that their populations are too large, then absolutely a controlled cull is probably the wisest strategy. Where a landowner is experiencing damage to crops or forestry, they can obtain a special Section 42 licence. Some licences are issued for the control and management of deer during the hours of darkness. Last year, Primetime asked the Wicklow Deer Management Project if we could accompany one of their deer stalkers on a shoot. We went out with a deer hunter who goes out shooting five nights a week after his day job. Of around 30 hunters utilised by the project, he is one of the two stalkers who uses special technical night vision equipment to cull deer at night in Wicklow. Within 20 minutes of darkness falling, the deer stalker found some deer and shot an immature stag. The deer was taken away and sold to a game dealer who takes it to a processing plant where it is tested by vets. Afterwards, the venison was sold into the UK or Irish market. Less deer have been culled during the pandemic due to lockdown restrictions on hunters and a collapse in the demand for venison as restaurants were closed. The culling of deer is an emotive issue that poses ethical questions. It raises strong hostility among some animal rights activists. I think these animals are living happily in their environment. Uh, they don't need any of us butting in. As a matter of fact, we ransacked their environment. We've ransacked the, the, the places where these animals lived. And now we want to come after them again with these lame excuses that are being shown um, at us animal rights campaigners, trying to protect these animals and try to keep these animals in their natural environment. John Carmody has been a strong advocate of animal rights since the mid 1990s. He's opposed to any form of culling deer or seals in any circumstances. These animals are sentient beings. They're like our dogs or cats, as a matter of fact. They can experience fear. They can experience suffering. They want to be free. They want to live in the wild. And I wish to God at times that we could understand what it is that they have to say, because I think as a nation, we would be hanging our heads in shame. And I think enough is enough. It's time to let these animals alone. The ideal would be that, you know, we did live in a country where we had areas of wilderness that could regulate themselves because we don't have that you know things like deer has occupied this odd niche of being half wildlife but in on agricultural land um i think unfortunately something has to be done on unless you looked at wide-scale ecological restoration Connor McMorrow reporting there.